Good morning, y'all. Today we're going to uh, get some of the parts put back on the 450. Uh, everything but the suspension. Um, <clears throat> my triple trees are back from the powder coaters. It'll be black. It'll turn out pretty nice. I had to put a new bearing on there. Um, I got a few things I can get done on it today. I want to get these back on, get the front fender on, the bars back on, probably change the levers. And then we'll uh, go through a few of the other parts that, uh, that I put on since uh, the last video on this bike. So um, hopefully I'm not in the way too much. Uh, just kick back and enjoy. I bought a uh, marine grade uh, waterproof grease. Is that original grease from Honda? Not so good. Um, also got to take the, uh, uh, the swing arm and uh, the linkage apart to uh, put some waterproof grease in there as well. Like I previously mentioned, uh, when you're starting with a brand new bike, you should probably uh, do that because they don't come with the best grease. It doesn't last long. And if you don't think about it, you forget. And next thing you know, it's two years later and all your bearings are shot because they didn't, really didn't have waterproof grease in them. So that's probably uh, the best thing to do. And, and honestly, even if you buy a used bike, if everything feels tight and, and, and it's not you know falling apart, Go ahead and take it down and uh, clean the bearings and repack them with some good waterproof grease. You'll get a lot more life out of them. I was uh, thinking the bearings, all the bearings for the 250 I got to order um, are going to total a couple hundred dollars by the time I replace them all. So um, that's a considerable expense. For something you could have easily took care of and prevented uh, that will eventually wear out anyway but uh, for the most part they'll uh, they'll last a long time if you keep them clean and greased with some good marine grade or waterproof you can buy uh, was it Maxima specific motocross waterproof grease you can buy uh, I just bought I just bought some I think I got this from tractor supply it's a uh, off-road and marine grease so it's made for uh dirt and water and all that other stuff it'll hold up <clears throat> it is literally driving me crazy seeing this thing set in pieces hard to do I think I've made uh, two payments on this thing already <laughs> and haven't rode it yet. So yeah, that's a little hard to, a little hard to, hard to do. But yeah, take your time and do it right. It's worth it in the end, so. take a trip off the back of the stand there. I don't like pounding on these with a screwdriver either, but I don't have a spanner wrench here. I just get to where I can't move it anymore. No play in it. Uh, <clears throat> there's the uh, top cramp. Uh, you can see the Emblems, they really turned out pretty nice. Turned out pretty nice. And I do have to, uh, I don't know if you guys can see it or not, but some of the tape leaked off a little bit and there's some uh, overspray down in the, it's mainly on the bottom one, but uh, now there's some right there. 
I have to clean that out with, uh, I don't have a wheel for my Dremel tool handy, so I'm probably just gonna use a file to knock that down. That way the forks will slide back in there. probably go back once I get the forks in and tighten this tighten this nut down but for the time being I'm going to leave it hand tight that way they can move them and line them up won't be a problem I'm going to set the handlebars back in here get them off the cables and the hoses they've been hanging on for I don't know a month now I guess One of the things I like about this this new model, um, they're very much adjustable on the handlebars. They've got uh, the clamps are offset. You can flip them either way. Um, there's two sets of holes here in the top clamp. Quite a bit of adjustment. Um, six foot one with a with a considerable reach, so. I offset the bars towards the back and put them um, in the front set of holes. That pretty much makes them neutral or centered over the fork tube, which is how I like them. So there's all kinds of possibilities here. These, uh, this setup's pretty nice. I like it. Again, I'm, I'm only going to leave these hand tight until I get the the forks on it because it's a lot easier to get this stuff tight there and uh, that guy goes over here and him right there a lot of this stuff well, I'll just leave it hanging over here for now until I get some of this other stuff back on Actually, I think it was this button head bolt that went there. It's a good idea to take some pictures. I failed to do on this. So you know kind of what goes where. Let me put it back together. Okay, this other hole here in the center is for uh, the number plate, so <clears throat> we're not even putting that on yet. So, I'm going to start plugging some of this stuff back up. There we go. This guy right here. Good to get 
first. Yeah, there it is. That clips on that little dude right there. Put that in place. I think that's it. Got it correct. Um, all right. Um, <coughs> I went with the uh, the old tried and true rental uh, full diamond soft compound grips. These are what I always used back in the day. Um, at the end of my uh, career, I started using these. Uh, I kind of changed the name on them. They're called Aramid Grip now. They were uh, Kevlar dual compound. It's the same grip. The only problem with these is they're only available in half waffle. Now, the reason I ran these old rental grips is because they um, didn't have any waffle on them. I don't, I prefer to not have any waffle because it's, uh, causes blisters on my fingers. I don't know. These ones aren't too bad just because of the compound. I like them because these, for me, these help with the, uh, arm pump you don't have to hang on to the bike so hard as they're real tacky and you just don't have to hang on real hard so um I, I may or may not switch these out put these on um those are brand new i'll probably just wear them out first and then put these on so and th those don't last long anyway they're the soft compound they'll they'll have the where my wrists have been broken before uh for some reason this side of my hand on the left side will wear the end right off the grip so it's uh even on my harley i have to change that grip out because it just the way it i don't know the way it healed up the way it was put back together just doesn't hold right so anyway those they're good grips i think the next thing i'll do is probably put these uh Put these levers on see if i like them or not can't pull on the brake right now because it's uh not on the rotor so it's probably not a good idea but if i can get this uh this brake line is really causing me some problems there we go all right put it this way go jury's still out on these levers i'm not sure i'm gonna try them if i don't like them i'll just get some asvs hopefully i can find a set that's made for the hydraulic clutch on this thing but we'll give them a try I don't buy them because they're red or anything like that. It's because they got the breakaway feature on them. It's pretty likely I'll end up dropping this thing a time or two. So I'll be racing the 50 plus class. That's that's how old I am. All right, let's see what we got here. Stuff's a little hard to work with out here. It's not really that warm. It's 50, 50 some degrees today. It's not too bad, but rubber stuff don't like to move. That. All right. You can see uh, the uh, factory levers. Well, I wouldn't call that a breakaway, but maybe it is. They're, uh, adjustable for, uh, reach as well. Um, I have really big hands, so I like to move the levers out a little bit where I can get to them.
make a career out of this here. There we go. That's interesting. Okay. Hmm. Try to get that boot. I'm gonna find what I'm looking for here. This fellas, this might not, this might not be the, may not be the ticket. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. One of the things I noticed about this bike when I was piddling around the yard when I first got it home was I tend to have a finger around the handlebar when I'm pulling the lever back and it ends up against my knuckles and it wasn't uh, wasn't exactly uh, disengaging the clutch all the way and I kept stalling it so I don't know if that's gonna help me or not again that remains to be seen like i said if i don't like these things i'm probably going to just take them right back off so that red anodized is cool and all but i'm more about function than, than i am anything so gave up on all that flashy stuff a long time ago so get that thing all the way down in there and i'm going to Give her a couple pulls and see how it feels. Too bad, not too bad. Might try to bring that out just a little bit. And see, that's considerably farther away than that OEM one, so. It'll either work or it won't. <laughs> We're gonna keep those uh, original ones in the, uh, we'll keep those original ones in the toolbox for spares in case, uh, Just in case. Yeah. Right. Let's see if I can get that boot back over that thing up. Ripping it.
That's sure to stab a hole in it if I ain't careful. There it is. Okay. Wrenches here. We'll uh, go ahead and move that thing out just a little bit. Oh, yeah. Appears that they left it loose already for me. All right. It feels like it's disengaging. Give her just a little bit more. Okay. likelihood of me finding two eight millimeters not very likely I'm going to do this the hard way okay right, we got her Hope we got her we'll go back over it. Okay, there it is. There's the clutch lever. I'm gonna, uh, when I get down putting this stuff on, I'll zoom in on some of this stuff so y'all can see it better. That's uh, a <coughs> that's the clutch lever. The brake lever's next. Can't test pull that one again. Like I said, the caliper's off the rotor, so just gonna have to wing it on that one. Give me an idea of where I, where I want it. This one's going to have that same style uh, plunger on it as the other one. Yep, sure does. Okay. Not gonna lie to y'all, I'm really, <clears throat> really excited about getting back into this. Uh, I took about a, well, let's see, the last time I took a gate was 2011. Yeah, last time I lined up on a gate was 2011. And, uh, Pretty important. 2011. That was the last time I raced. Um, I had one bike left at that point. It was a uh, 2008 uh, CRF 250R, and it was the uh, limited edition 
uh, black black one. I don't know if y'all remember those bikes. They had uh, flame graphics on them, which was horrible. But uh, the bike had black wheels. Um, <clears throat> I did a little bit of work to it. It had uh, it had a big bore kit in it. Just pull my big ass around. Um, had FMF exhaust. Uh, it was a mega bomb. It ran pretty good. I always struggle with those uh, smaller bikes, uh, riding them outdoors. Um, my go-to was the, uh, definitely was the 125 indoors. That was, that was my uh, cup of tea. So definitely do better riding indoors than I do outdoors. Always have. Um, if I was not even a has been, I'm a never was been, but <laughs> My future would have been a like arena cross, uh, and I did do some of that uh, many years ago before it really became a big thing. It uh, started in Ohio where I grew up and where I raced. So a guy named uh, Drew Wolf started that whole deal, and uh, it went pretty big. But formats changed over the years. Uh, back in those days, you raced uh, uh, <clears throat> 125s and 250s. And uh, I think now it's just two, like a two moto format, ride the same bike both times. 450s are a bit much, I think, for the tight confines of arena cross. So, but, yep, I'm just looking to do some 50 plus, 50 plus stuff, take it easy, not hurt myself, have a good time. So, get myself back in shape. Should be fun. Should be fun. We'll uh, we'll definitely be uh, filming a lot of that stuff, the races, and uh, <clears throat> it'd be interesting. Speaking of interesting, there it goes. Getting that getting that dude in there where it belongs. It'll be interesting. And I have to resist the urge to pull on this one. Can't do it, man. I think uh, I'm going to move that lever out a little bit just to... Yeah. Again, I got long fingers, big hands, so I'm going to move that lever out just a little bit before I put the boot back on it. I think it'll be fine. I think it'll be fine. The suspension in the shop opened back up, uh, I believe, today, so... Maybe I get lucky and have my suspension back before this weekend. See if we can catch a track somewhere open. Go try to shake this thing down and get it dialed in. There we go. There we go. Like that right there. Once I get this whole front end back together, I'm going to make some final adjustments to the controls this way. Might need to move the bars a little bit. I don't know. Again, I need to ride it and see how it feels. And I may need to move a few things around to make me happy. But all in all, we should be pretty close where we're at. track of how that went on there. I believe that's it right there. Nope. That's not it. Is it? No. 
Oh, hail. Let's see. That way goes this way, right here. Yep, that's it. Keep track of this shit. Trying to get this on here without pushing on this brake lever. <clears throat> Just imagine if this thing was like 20 years old, how bad that boot would be to try to get back over there. This is brand new stuff. So. Okay. That's it. Don't really have anything else to <coughs> excuse me work on this thing today. So getting that thing in a neutral position is pretty hard. As I had mentioned before, I got to take. Uh, file or something and clean this powder coat up out inside these holes before I put the fork tubes back in. I can and I believe I will go ahead and put the rear or the front fender uh, back on it now. Get that off the bench. So we'll go ahead and do that. something here and make this easier on myself. There we go. I don't know about y'all, but it's always, I've always found it easier to take the fender on and off if the fork's not on the bike, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Also, putting those lower fork guards on or taking them off is a lot easier with the front wheel off the bike, so save you from having to try to get up in that. On a, I don't know how other makes are, but on a Honda, that one bolt on the inside. There's really no good way to get that out of there without cutting down an Allen wrench or it takes a few seconds to pull the front wheel off. So. <laughs> yeah, I guess we'll just let them both. There you go. Seems to be where it wants to be. Okay, 
me uh, grab the uh, grab the phone. I don't have a camera or editing software or anything like that. That's why these videos are so terrible. But let me grab this phone here and uh, I'll show you around um, some of the stuff that we got done on it. And uh, next video will be putting the suspension on and finishing this bike, getting it ready to ride. So one second here. And let me switch. All right, so hang on a second here. Nope, can't seem to figure that out. All right, so there's the triple clamps, powder coated black. I really need to try to switch this thing around here. What's this do? Sorry, guys. I don't know. Anyway. There they are. Levers. Uh, Turner levers. Jury's gonna be out on that. There's that grip, core grip. That stuff fits fantastic. It's uh like a rubber, so it won't destroy like the old stuff back in the day, like they put on stairs that would just destroy your boots and and stuff over time. But this stuff here is a little rubbery, so it gives you some grip protects the frame there's the uh, slider and uh, chain guide and new chain I'm gonna get a sprocket but I need to ride it first to make sure because I'm gonna probably have to go up one or two teeth to uh, so I can ride this in a taller gear make it more manageable but that's it guys for that's all i've got for now um hopefully we get the uh suspension back this week get this dude back in one piece and then i'll uh show you all the finished product that's it for now y'all be good